Okay, so this is Mary Ann. She wrote the obituary in the paper. She's a writer. She's a photographer. She wants to do this for, for him. So, okay. and so I just want to thank everyone for coming. And just to remind you that it is tomorrow at St. Vincent's tomorrow, not here. Push me out of the way. <laughs> you always push me around. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Sorry, guys. I've never done this before. It's my first time, so. Um, hang on. That's just okay. water, right? <laughs> yeah, for starters. Okay. So, distinguished guests, family, and friends, Janice, Cindy, Laura, and I, and their families, thank you all for being here. My brother Ken would also be on that list if he hadn't passed away two months ago on my birthday, of all days. His wife Cindy and her family is here to help us welcome you all to be with us to pay your last respects to my dad, Norm. It may not have seemed like it since we had constant disagreements, but my dad was my idol. He was a tough old bird, growing up on the streets of Detroit and then joining the U.S. Marines. I don't recall him ever telling me stories of jumping out of planes while he served, but I do recall plenty of times hearing about the time he almost fell from the sky when my brother, who was a pilot, took him up in a small aircraft and my dad's door opened in mid-flight. God must have been the co-pilot that day and held my dad's shoulders while he was able to get the door closed again. My dad was set in his ways and as kids we just thought he was being too strict. We weren't allowed to swear in the house. We had to go to church every week. Mom had to have dinner ready when, we, when he got home from work. We would set the table and put on a Leave it to Beaver show. If a stranger looked in our window at dinner time and saw us all enjoying the finest cuisine that Mom had made, we would look like a Hallmark family. Finest cuisine to us, though, was banquet frozen dinners. <laughs> My brother was definitely the prince of the house. He had a lot more leeway as a only boy. My dad cherished him and let him get away with most anything. He had a pet name for my brother, though. He would always call him Laos and tell him he was wasting his money taking flying lessons, but that didn't stop my brother. He knew my dad didn't really mean it. My dad was just a realist, not a dreamer. But as adults, we can appreciate the things my dad did for us now. He wasn't strict, just a loving father who wanted to protect and shield his children, especially his young daughters. My dad grew up in a time when men were the head of households and protectors of the family. He was a traditionalist. Men respected women back then, and it was his job to keep the girls and his family safe. And he did a great job at that. I remember having pool parties in our backyard and going to Bobbleville Island for company picnics. His friends and co-workers from Chrysler were wild and crazy. There was always the outrageous one we had to run from, or he would definitely pick you up and throw you into the pool, fully clothed. Those were good times. Dennis. <laughs> My dad enjoyed being part of the Knights of Columbus in Madison Heights. He was a huge staple to it and devoted a good portion of his life to this organization. He could be seen hosting, assisting, or counting the money at their various events several times each year. Sometimes we wondered if his obsession with the Knights meant he loved them more than his family. But that could never be. My dad loved us. He didn't always show it, but we knew that we were the ultimate joy in his life. My dad was somewhat of a sports nut. He loved baseball and at one point played on a team. No major leagues for him though, just local fun. The Detroit Tigers were his favorite. My dad and I spent many evenings catching a game on television and sometimes we would go downtown to see a live event. It was really fun to have this time to share something of value with my dad. I miss the family vacations. Those were the golden years because back then there were more smiles and laughter. Everyone got along. I remember one time my sister Laura and I went with my parents to Kentucky. I was so excited to stop at the horse park, but kids can be foolish at times. I was joking around in the car after watching some silly little skin on TV. When I stepped out of the car, I pretended my leg had fallen asleep and I was wobbly. I ended up falling to the ground. We walked around the park for a while before I realized walking had become painful. Unfortunately, I had sprained my ankle. This was the first day of our trip, and I ended up lying in the hotel room for the majority of it. Stupid games kids play, and I paid the price. Mom and Dad took care of me during the trip and got me safely back home so I could rest and heal. I wasn't a happy child to be stuck at home on the couch, but Mom kept me entertained. 
Then as I got older, I was just as foolish. I moved across country to get married, or so I thought. Another failure. I ended up in a bad place. Dad was quick to drop everything, jump in the car with Mom, and drive all the way to the other side of the country to come get me. That was the kind of man he was. And when I got home, penniless, I hid out in my room for an entire year while my parents waited on me until I was ready to face the world again. Lots of kids wished for a dad like mine. I was lucky to have him. My dad lived a full life. It was sad to see in his later years his body slowly start to, to deteriorate, but he was a fighter. I think it was that marine spirit. He was in and out of hospitals and survived a bout with bladder cancer. There was one time he went out in for bleeding from the prostate. He had to have surgery, and while he was on the table, suffered a heart attack. The very next day, he had quintuple bypass surgery. If he hadn't, he would have passed on much earlier. And then the bleeding started again, so he went into the OR a third time in that same hospital stay. He was tough, that's for sure. <coughs> So, as you can see, my dad has stared death in the face on several occasions, from almost falling from a plane to suffering a major heart attack, and he still wasn't ready to leave his family behind. But then God held out his hand and said, it's time. You did well in life. You made a difference in so many people's lives in your 92 years. You have a wonderful and strong family. Now you can rest. And his heart gave out on him and he was at peace. He died at home with his wife by his side the way he would have wanted to go. I'd like to read a few lyrics from a song called The Undertaker that my friend introduced me to. The Undertaker is a busy man, for he and death go hand in hand. He works all day and digs all night. He loves the dead, they are his life. No mortal can escape his plan. He sifts us all as grains of sand. And then one day he too shall pass. And as he's dying, death will laugh. The undertaker knows no shame. He's come to stake his claim. Rich or poor, large or small, the undertaker takes them all. I love you, Dad. And we will all miss you so much. But we'll be okay. You did a fine job. You were a great father and a loving husband. We will carry on your legacy until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>